Welcome to episode two of Food for the Future, a Food Industry Asia program where we report on the opportunities and challenges facing the sector in Asia. I'm Yvonne Chan. Over three episodes, we will look at the food industry value chain, consumer insights, and in this episode, safe and sustainable innovation. The food industry has come a long way in providing necessary education and valuable information to increasingly discerning and aware consumers. But the increase in consumer awareness has also brought a level of cynicism and doubt that can be difficult to overcome. As Paul Christian discovered, developing a proprietary biotechnology platform that produces animal-free proteins is one thing. Convincing the public is another. Tasty, nutritious, healthy and safe. Key ingredients in any kitchen catering to the modern consumer. People move from just basic sustenance to thinking about maybe more nutrition and then eventually they get to uh, where does the food come from? Is it ethically sourced? Is it sustainable? How are the farmers being treated? With an appetite for protein set to increase exponentially in the Asian market, people are asking more questions. From protecting animals, to diving deep into the ocean to look at plastics and other contaminants that are of growing concern to our health. Unfortunately, the way that we are emptying our ocean, catching fish and other uh, seafood from the ocean is not sustainable. Producing more than 60% of the world's oxygen, the ocean's overall health depends on the health of its marine ecosystem. Companies like Avant, the first cultivated fish producer in Asia, are focused on sustainability through proteins curated from cells. We form Avon with the goal to use our technology to produce fish and seafood products so that we do not need to go and catch fish from the ocean so that we can leave the ocean uh, to replenish itself for a healthier planet. Avon's technology turns cells plucked from fish into products like restaurant-ready fish fillets and fish more, with a range of other offerings in the pipeline. Starting with starter cells, stored at a temperature of minus 180 degrees Celsius, production commences in a small tea flask. As cells multiply, they are transferred to larger containers from 5 litres to 50, 200 and ultimately 2,000 litres and beyond. As the bioprocess takes place, the volume should be optimal for the cell density in the container. Restaurateurs and their customers are welcoming sustainable and ethical suppliers. But there are concerns around safety, health, genetic modification and quality of the resulting product. First question is, what does it do to my body? What will the impact be? And then eventually people also ask, um, is there a technology aspect? Of, is, it, is it GMO? Is it, is it ethical? These kind of questions also come up. The Avant team follows strict guidelines that aim to alleviate safety concerns as well as optimize the final product's taste and texture. Cultivated uh, cells and also uh, cell culture has been here for over 17 years already. So this technology is very established. And genetic modification is one of the ways that make the process easier, but it's not a must. So at Alphameet, we, we have a strict policy. We do not use any genetic modification technique or we do not modify the cells genetically. Nutritional value can also be controlled during the process. Different ratios of fat cells to muscle cells can be chosen to suit dietary requirements. The cell growth process itself also needs to stand up to scrutiny. Traditionally, a fetal bovine serum was used to culture cells. But now, Avant has developed a cell culture nutrient that is not only serum-free, but also free of animal components. When we grow the cells, we provide them with simple nutrients, for example, glucose, amino acids. We use purified water to dissolve all this um, mixture of feed, and then we filter the, um, the feed with uh, very special types of filter that um, even the virus cannot pass through, so to provide very clean culture medium of feed to the cells. And at the same time, when we culture the cells, we do it in a clean room, so in which the room is uh, free of uh, uh, microbes, dust, or other undesirable contaminants from the environment. So um, from using the clean feeds and also the clean room, 
we basically do not need to add antibiotics. So they, the, the, out, the final product is basically um, um, contaminant-free. The flow-on effect is improved cost-effectiveness in the production process. We have quality control to make sure the genetic uh, stability of the cells and also there will be uh, no mutations in the genes. And also uh, our company has strict policy that we do not use any uh, genetic modification method because um, this, this method is, is, is not a must in uh, cultivating cells. We have uh, other better methods to do so. As the industry develops, the excitement ahead is not just about simplified ways to produce protein, but reduced production time to cater to the world's demand. Growing fish from fries to a sizable fish in a fish farm takes plus or minus 12 months. In our case, our process takes roughly about two months, so it's a drastically reduced the production time. Singapore has established new regulations to govern the use of this technology. Cultivated meat products must be approved before selling to the public. Safety, taste, nutrition and environmental sustainability may be the reasons why consumers will prefer cultivated meat. We may in the future wonder why we ever produced meat using animals. And we're joined again by Matt Kovach, the CEO of Food Industry Asia. Matt, we know that consumer trends and public opinions are really important in bringing new food and beverage products to market. So as the CEO of FIA, has it been very challenging trying to introduce alternative proteins to the market, particularly to consumers? So the alternative proteins market is a very exciting space. A lot of companies getting involved with this, a lot of finance, a lot of investment. So what we have is plant-based and we have cultivated meat. Plant-based, pretty simple. You take vegetables, you process it, turn it into new products. Cultivated meat, it's grown in a lab. Um, what consumers want to know is, is that food healthy? Is it safe? And is it nutritious? And of course, is it at a price point that consumers can actually afford? And our role will be to work with industry and governments to ensure that we have uh, the appropriate standards and regulations that will give uh, consumers the faith that those products will do what they say they're going to do. Of course, I, I agree. Keeping your industry membership up to date with some of the latest business sentiments and strategies is also vitally important for the role of FIA. What other interesting developments are in store for the rest of the year? So we've got some exciting projects. There's three in particular, actually. So one will be our business survey. We're looking at across the whole of uh, Southeast Asia, what uh, companies, food manufacturers and beverage companies, ingredients companies, what they're feeling is the, the problems in the market. And those are quite clear around supply chains right now. But we want to take a pulse to be able to really understand what the problems and challenges are. We'll be launching that in August. And then we have another report that we've partnered with Oxford Economics on the economic contribution of the agri-food uh, value chain. And that will show in five key markets in Southeast Asia how big the food and uh, agri industry is, how important it is, and how we need to work with governments to ensure that we have more sustainable supply chains going forward. And then there is one more as well that we've decided to do at the end of the year. And that will be a major piece of research on consumers across the whole of Asia Pacific of what their perceptions and opinions are on health and nutrition and on sustainability as well. So lots in the pipeline. When will you be sharing the results of all this work? So that will come out in the next couple of months and then maybe towards November and December, there'll be some more information released. Sounds like it will be a very informative and interesting year ahead for the FIA. Thank you, Matt. Developing new foods for the future sometimes demands not one, but a mix of innovative technologies and in a unique public-private partnership. ASTAR's SIFB, or the Singapore Institute of Food and Biotechnology Innovation, is enabling developers to benefit from a connected chain of innovation. Julianne Chan reports. The food industry is facing a wave of opportunity and discovery in Asia. Now, the Asian consumers are actually growing at a rapid pace uh, given the increasing uh, affluence across the various uh, Asian countries. And in SIFB, we have a special focus of our food innovation centered on the Asian consumers. And while we are centering our food innovation on Asian consumers, it doesn't really just uh, primarily restrict ourselves to the Asian markets, but Asian consumers are actually can be found globally. The food industry has to look at very much at the moment at sustainable, novel food products that are healthy and tasty, that are sustainable and safe. This is very much a demand by consumers. ASTAR is helping companies to provide this type of innovation. We have capabilities in biotechnology, in Asian nutrition, um, also in food processing engineering, 
and in analytics and also some capabilities in food safety research. Until now, food industry players have usually focused on just one of the many nutritional technologies available. CIFB, which stands for the Singapore Institute of Food and Biotechnology Innovation, is unique. CIFB brings together technology and experts from various A-star research institutes and industries. It also works closely with other research partners in the food ecosystem. The vision is a connected chain of innovation, a second way for the food and beverage industry. Here we work in a very collaborative manner in a public-private partnership model and we'd like to work with a whole myriad of uh, enterprises from startups to multinationals to the local enterprises. Food resilience is of paramount importance and we know that existing food supply systems are not sustainable. On top of that, the world population keeps growing, so we need alternatives. And the partnership with ASTAR CIFB enables us to create alternatives that excite the consumer. Singapore's food security is a key driver of the government's 30 by 30 vision, as advised by the Singapore Food Agency. The 30 by 30 is our goal to develop the capability and capacity of our agri-food industry to produce 30% of our nutritional needs locally by 2030. It requires us to produce food in a way that is highly productive, climate resilient and resource efficient. Alternative proteins could contribute meaningfully to this 30 by 30 goal. Alternative proteins and sustainably produced foods are the key research focus here. New technologies developed at the lab are scaled up in production taking food innovations from the lab to the consumer through public and private partnerships. At CFB's fermentation lab, microbial and fungal strains are grown on feedstocks which can be derived from the upcycling of side stream products. This process can boost and enhance the alternative protein derived from these fermentates. Besides microbial alternative protein, CFB scientists also develop and improve plant-based alternative protein offerings. The raw materials for plant-based meats can be dry powders that are stored inexpensively for long periods. With bulk alternative protein material at hand, CIFB's food process engineering team conducts research into a variety of alternative meat analog textures via extrusion and other processes. With any type of food that we eat, there are roughly five elements that we consider. Taste, texture, affordability, nutritional content, sustainability. The first two, taste and texture, are non-negotiable. A major challenge for food companies is scaling up from the lab to the marketplace. To accelerate the commercialization of sustainable food products, A-Star CIFB has partnered with Termasic, a global investment company headquartered in Singapore to establish the Food Tech Innovation Center, or the FTIC. The FTIC offers R&D and scale-up facilities to help companies streamline this transition. Through our Singapore Food Story R&D program, we support research projects in sustainable urban food production, future foods, and food safety science and innovation. We also partner Enterprise Singapore to provide access to shared infrastructure, industry knowledge, and co-innovation platforms. The future of food is well on its way from the lab to our kitchen. Cleaner, greener, and tastier than before. So we wrap up this episode with a mix of exciting sustainable technologies for the future. And in our other episodes, we have reports on the value chain and consumer trends. You can review and share these episodes and films by going to the website, foodindustry.asia. And that's all for now. But I'll see you again for another episode of Food for the Future. I'm Yvonne Chan. Take care and goodbye.